Hello everyone. Today I am going to deal with the topic semiconductor statistics. So under this topic we are going to study about the electron transition in between different levels or bands. Before going to that topic, let us recapitulate the knowledge whatever we have about the extrinsic semiconductor by comparing n type and p type semiconductor. So let us recapitulate it. So in n type semiconductor we can take an example of arsenic where it is giving an extra electron whereas in p type it is deficit of electron for example aluminum then n type semiconductors are obtained when we dope it with pentavalent impurities whereas p type semiconductors are obtained when doping is done using trivalent impurities in n type semiconductors as the impurity is giving an electron that is it is acting as a donor and such atoms are called as donors whereas for p type they are accepting the electron means hole is created that's why these are coming under acceptors and the pentavalent impurities or donors belong to group 5 of the periodic table which is nothing but column number 15 of the periodic table whereas p type these are group 3 elements which are used in doping and the main thing in order to study the semiconductor statistics is with respect to the donor level as well as acceptor level we have already seen that the donor level lies just below the conduction band in case of n type semiconductor so in the diagram we can observe there is a valence band and a conduction band and there is a donor level just below the conduction band and the fermi level lies in between that of the bottom of the conduction band and the donor level in the same way in p type semiconductor we have acceptor level which lies just above the valence band and valence band it is having a number of electrons and the acceptor level is just above the valence band and the fermi energy level is intermediate between the acceptor level and the valence band so next let us study about the four types of possible transitions which an electron can do in order to contribute for electrical conductivity so if you consider conduction band valence band then again because of doping there is a donor level as well as a acceptor level then the electron can do transition in different ways mainly four different ways so let us study one by one so first is the transition of electron from valence band to conduction band here there is a thermal excitation taking place means if you consider conduction band with energy ec and valence band with energy ev we know that there are a number of electrons in the valence band at absolute zero conduction band is completely empty whereas valence band is completely filled by electrons but as the temperature increases that is due to thermal agitation the energy is absorbed by the electron which is present in the valence band and they get thermally excited into the conduction band and after the transition electron is present in the conduction band and because of this transition a hole is created in valence band so this type of transition is called as interband transition because here two types of bands that is valence band and conduction band are involved and transition is taking place in between these two different bands so here we are getting an electron which is a conduction electron as well as a hole so both are free to move and they are going to contribute for conductivity and this is the case mainly in the intrinsic semiconductor so this is the first type of transition of in case of electron 
Then let us move to the second type of transition that is the transition of electron from the donor level to the conduction band. So this is mainly observed in N type of semiconductor because we know donor level is mainly present in N type of semiconductors because of the doping with pentavalent impurities which give you extra electrons which will be lying just below their energy level is going to lie just below the conduction band. So it can be observed here clearly the donor level is lying just below the conduction band and these donor level or donors are nothing but free electrons or electrons and they are getting thermally ionized that is when the temperature is increased even at the room temperature we have seen in our previous session even at the room temperature the electrons which are present in the donor level they get thermally ionized into the conduction band because the energy required is very very less the binding energy is very less when compared to the thermal energy even at room temperature so what happens the electron which is present at the donor level is going to ionize and shift to the conduction band and then there is that electron is going to be free which is going to contribute for conductivity. So here this type of transition increases the number of electrons in the conduction band. Here we are considering only 1,1 one, one electron but it doesn't mean that actual semiconductors have only one electron. There might be a number of electron based on the concentration of the dopants added. Here just to understand we are using 1,1 one, one electrons so that understanding is becoming easier. So this type of transition from the donor level to the conduction band will increase the number of electrons in the conduction band and in the conduction band electrons are free to move which are going to contribute for electrical conductivity. So this is the second type of transition. Then third type of transition is the transition of electron from the valence band to the acceptor level. And this type of transition is mainly observed in P type of semiconductor because we know that acceptor level is mainly observed in P type of semiconductors due to the doping of trivalent impurities within the intrinsic crystal lattice. Again if we consider the conduction band and valence band we know the acceptor level is lying just above the valence band and acceptor level will be having a number of holes. Holes are nothing but deficit of electrons and we also know that valence band contains a number of electrons and under this transition the electron is going to get thermally excited. We know electron is negatively charged whereas hole is positively charged. So because of the opposite charges and because of the thermal excitation, the electron from the valence band will be excited to the acceptor level. And this type of transition will be giving more number of holes in the valence band because the electron is going to the acceptor level leaving behind a hole. So a hole is created in the valence band and it is going to contribute for electrical conductivity. Again the transition is of electron but it is leaving behind a hole and that's why we say this type of transition is mainly observed in p-type semiconductor where again holes are going to be the majority charge carriers. This is the third type of transition and let us move on to the last that is fourth type of transition that is in between the donor level and acceptor level. One thing we need to remember is none of the extrinsic semiconductors are purely N type or purely P type. That is we can't say if it is N type semiconductor then only donors are present. 
even n type semiconductor contains some amount of acceptors as the minority charge carriers but the electrons that is donors will be the majority charge carriers and if you consider p type semiconductor it contains donors also but as the minority charge carriers and holes will be that is acceptors will be the majority charge carriers that's why when we study semiconductor we say that both holes and electrons are acting as charge carriers whereas one will be majority charge carrier whereas another one will be minority charge carrier in case of extrinsic semiconductor so this is the general case or every semiconductor is going to be of this form only because 100% pure type of semiconductor is not possible to obtain again if you consider the conduction band and the valence band now as we know both the levels that is donor level as well as acceptor level will be there and we have the knowledge that donor level means it is having the free electrons whereas that is donor whereas the acceptor level contains the holes which are nothing but the acceptors which is due to the doping and in this case because of the opposite charges the electron can de excite from the donor level to the acceptor level so this is another kind of transition which is possible in case of semiconductor that is extrinsic semiconductor so these are the four possible transitions of electrons which are again going to decide or contribute for electrical conductivity so this is about semiconductor statistics thank you